Let's say that you've been asked to find the perimeter of this triangle given the lengths of its sides. To find the perimeter, you will need to add the lengths of each side together. We'll call this answer our unrounded answer. There's a problem with our unrounded answer. It comes from the last two digits, in the hundredths place and the thousandths place. When we added our lengths together, we assumed that any missing digits were zeros. We don't in fact know that they're zeros because we didn't actually measure these numbers. They could be nines or threes or sevens or any other number. Saying that the perimeter is 3.115 centimeters implies that we measured all the lengths out to three decimals and added those numbers together. But if you look at the lengths that we were given, they are all measured out to different precisions with different numbers of decimal places. To report the answer correctly, we need to account for those unknown digits in our lengths. First, I'm going to draw a bar over the last significant place in each length. This helps me to identify the least precise number. In this case, the least precise number is 1.2 centimeters with one decimal place. This means that I should round my answer to only have one decimal place as well. The first decimal place in our unrounded answer is a one. Next to it is another one. So according to the rules of rounding, the one in the first decimal place will stay a one. We can now report the rounded answer as 3.1 centimeters rounded for correct significant figures. Let's go over a couple more examples. Next, we're going to add 1,200 feet to 10 feet. First, I'm going to line up the decimal points. These numbers don't explicitly have decimal points, but we know the decimal point comes after the ones place. Now I'm going to do the math to get the unrounded answer. Next comes the bars, which go over the last significant digit in each of our numbers. We will round to the place with the bar farthest to the left. In other words, we are rounding to the same precision as the least precise number. That would be the two in the hundreds place. Next to the two is a one, so the rules of rounding say that the two stays the same. The rounded answer, with correct significant figures, is 1,200 feet. This might seem counterintuitive. If we add any number to another number, shouldn't the answer be bigger? We are again assuming, probably incorrectly, that the zeros in our numbers are in fact zeros. The measuring device for this probably looks something like this, a rope with a mark every 1,000 feet. So the only number that I was really certain about in this measurement was the one in the thousands place. I estimated the two in the hundreds place. And if I wasn't sure about the hundreds place, I certainly can't estimate the tens or ones place. And I can't be sure that they are zeros as the number is written. If I knew it was 1200 feet exactly because my measuring device allowed that level of precision, I would need to write the number as 1200 feet with a decimal at the end or write the number in scientific notation. Let's try a subtraction example, subtracting 10 feet from 1200 feet. First, I'll line up the decimals, then I'll do the math to get the unrounded answer. Now I can draw my bars over the last significant place in each number and round to the place with the bar farthest left, which is the least precise number. That will be the one in the hundreds place. Next to the one in the hundreds place is a nine, so we will have to round the 1 up to a 2. Therefore, our rounded answer with correct significant figures is 1,200 feet.